Hello, Calculus 1, Math 1341 students. I would like to go over the extra practice problems for Quiz 5 with you. Okay, Quiz 5 covers here. This is the inverse trig functions. Um, this is motion in space, parameterized curves, and Section 3.5 is L'Hopital's rule. I think these topics are super fun, and so this quiz extra practice will be fun, and well, so will the quiz when we get to it. So let's get started on number one. Right now, we have a particle moving in the xy plane, and its position is given here. We have multiple parts. The first part, we want to find the velocity at time t. Well, the nice thing is, so this is in R2, you see two components, this is a vector, and the way we calculate the velocity is we just differentiate each component. So we have 2t plus 3, and then we differentiate the sine, we have cosine of t plus pi um, times 1. Really, it's a chain rule here, but my inside function has derivative 1. Now we move on, letter B. We want the speed. Speed is the length of the velocity vector. Uh, but the first thing I need to calculate is the velocity at zero, and then that will help me get the speed at zero. I just take its length. Okay, so at zero, I get three, and cosine of zero plus pi, which is cosine pi, this is just three minus one. Because if you do a little unit circle here, pi is out here, where the cosine is minus one and the sine is zero. Very nice. But we're not finished with B. So far we found the velocity vector and now we take its length. This is a square root. We have three squared plus minus one squared. This is a square root of nine plus one. My speed is the square root of 10. We want to leave numbers like this, okay? Don't put it in your calculator and get an approximation. This is my answer right here um, in letter B. And that was my answer for letter A. Now we move on, letter C. We want the acceleration at time T. Well, acceleration is the derivative of velocity. And when we have uh, motion in space, as we do here, we just differentiate each component. So we differentiate the first coordinate, we get two. Differentiate the second coordinate, we get minus sine of t plus pi. Again, if you want, you can write times one, which is the derivative of the inside function. Um, but this is the same if you don't write the times one, of course. So it's fine either way. Now, the last part is letter D. We want the slope of the tangent line to the trajectory at time t equals zero. Well, um, what this is is dy dx. And then at t equals zero. Um, let me label here. If I call this first um, component or first coordinate function x of t and this one y of t, okay, this is consistent with the notation that we used in class, then dy dx evaluated at t equals zero is just y prime of zero divided by x prime of zero. Um, well, you see, I already have, in, in a sense, I already have y prime and x prime and my velocity vector. But if I didn't, I could certainly calculate them now. y prime is the cosine of uh, t plus pi. And then x prime is 2t plus 3. And we want this evaluated at t equals 0. This is cosine pi divided by three, this is negative one over three, okay? So this is the instantaneous rate of change uh, of y with respect to x, or equivalently, the slope of the tangent line at time t equals zero. This was number one. 
Number two, this is the one that involves some of our inverse trig functions. So it's important to understand here that this is definitely not this. Oh, definitely not. And similarly, this, the tan inverse is definitely not uh, this. Okay, definitely not. Some textbooks call these the arc tangent and arc sine. Ours does not. And I use the notation of our textbook, which is the sine inverse and tan inverse. But it's important to know these are the inverse trig functions. It is not one over sine. It is not one over tangent. Okay, fantastic. Um, letter A is a textbook exercise, although it is not one of the assigned ones. So we are doing it in this extra practice. We see one function divided by another. This is quotient rule. So we go to take the derivative. We have the denominator, which is sine inverse of x. And then times derivative of the numerator is e to the minus 2x times negative 2. This part is um, coming from the chain rule. I have up inside the exponent of e, I have minus 2x. So this is derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside times derivative of the inside function. Okay, so far I have denominator, derivative of the numerator, and then minus the numerator. Now here's the part that involves differentiating an inverse trig function. The derivative of the sine inverse is one over the square root of one minus x squared. We have denominator, derivative of the numerator, minus numerator, derivative of the denominator, and then all over the denominator squared. Now, this is not a properties of exponents. You cannot write this as sine to the minus two of x. Definitely not. And it's because here, the sine inverse is not one over sine. So just leave it exactly like this. Okay, it's sine inverse of x squared. Okay, we move on to B. We want J prime of X. This is chain rule. Um, my inside function is the natural log. My outside function is tan inverse. So first you take the derivative of the outside, which is like this, evaluated at the inside function and then multiply by derivative of the inside function. And as we have um, been practicing for multiple weeks, the derivative of natural log is one over X. And so this is J prime of X, letter B. Number three, we evaluate each limit. Um, I will just say all three of these, we may use L'Hopital's rule, but Generally, if you're given a limit, you need to make sure you can use it because it does not always apply. And so let's go through that sort of thought process first before we work A, B, and C, okay? Well, what we do generally with a limit, we try to evaluate. That is our first step. And here, if we try to evaluate, you notice I get zero in the numerator and then in the denominator, e to the zero is one. So I get one minus one. In fact, I do have this indeterminate form, which is zero over zero. Okay, we move on. Letter B, um, my numerator, ln of three X, this is growing without bound. And my denominator, X squared, growing without bound. Um, and so definitely I, the numerator is approaching infinity and similarly with the denominator. And so I have this indeterminate form. Um, for letter B. Now the last one, we have an inverse tangent here. As Y approaches zero, certainly the denominator goes to zero, but now we have to think, what is the tan inverse of zero? Zero in this case is a value of a tangent. And we are looking for the angle between minus pi over two and pi over two, such that the tangent is zero. Well, that is sine over cosine. Sine over cosine is zero um, right here when the sine of zero. So the tan inverse of zero is zero. All of that was to say that we in fact get this indeterminate form. 
So all three of these are of the type either zero over zero or plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity and L'Hopital's rule applies in all three of these limits. Okay, well now let's get started on actually calculating the limits. We want a limit as X approaches zero of two X squared minus X divided by E to the two X minus four X minus one. I've already thought through the fact that in fact, I can use L'Hopital, but you need to mark where you use it. So I will typically put an L H above the equal signs. You could also just use the words by L'Hopital's rule next to where you used it. And this rule says, well, we take the derivative on the top and take the derivative on the bottom, which would be two e to the two x minus four, and then reevaluate the limit. L'Hopital's rule says that certainly this function and this function are not equal, but this limit and this limit are equal, provided we have an indeterminate form such as this. Okay, you see, now we can just evaluate because what I'm left with is continuous at zero. This is. You notice when I evaluate at zero, I get minus one divided by um, two minus four, which is positive one over two. So this first limit exists and equals one half. Now let's move on to letter B. We want a limit as X goes to infinity of the ln of three X divided by X squared. We've seen this here before. This is the icon in our Canvas course. So we've been staring at this limit the entire semester. And now we finally get to calculate it. So exciting. Um, once again, we have already thought through the fact that L'Hopital's rule does apply. We can jump into it. I'm going to do this right here. It says we take the derivative on the top, take the derivative on the bottom, and reevaluate the limit. The derivative of ln of 3x, well, if you want to do chain rule, you can. 1 over 3x times 3. And then in my denominator, I have a 2x. Um, my next equals is not L'Hopital, though. Okay, It's important to understand that it is not. At this point, I'm just going to make this look nicer so I can clean up this expression and figure out what's happening as x grows without bound. Um, I have a 1 in my numerator. In my denominator, I have a 2x squared. Now, you see the denominator is growing without bound. We have a fixed numerator. This limit is 0. We have one more limit, which is letter C. This would be a limit as y approaches 0 of 4 times the tan inverse of y divided by y. This is where I am using L'Hopital. Take the derivative on the top, take the derivative on the bottom, reevaluate the limit. So we have a limit as y approaches zero. Well, we have four, that's my constant. And then the derivative of tan inverse is one over one plus y squared. So, so far I have the derivative of my numerator and the derivative of the denominator is just one divided by one, and um, maybe I can make this slightly nicer. I'll just write it as four over one plus y squared. But you see, this is continuous at zero, and so I can just evaluate, and you see the limit, it is four. This is the end of number three. This is the end of quiz five extra practice. Thank you so much. Good luck on the quiz.